Shalom, Koloyim La, Yahweh Bashim Yal Shai. Also, the honor to those of GMS and honest to you, Akim. Peace and bless your brothers and sisters that listen to Church of the Firstborn, the hopeful elect. Koloyim La, Yahweh Bashim Yal Shai. And, um, you know, I was going through Song of Solomon and I seen the Apostle Kabar video. Uh, supping with the Lord, man. I said, that's the spirit. Okay, he briefly mentioned it, uh, and I think in a two-minute clip, and I said, that's the spirit. I went to go into that to the Prophet Yahweh Shemel Shah. You know, sitting at the king's table, man, being a guest at his table, man, the highest honor in the land, man, sitting at the Lord's table, man, which, you know, the elect, uh, when you read Revelation, the third chapter, will sit at Yahweh Shah's table. He said that, I'm not going to drink the fruit of the vine. Until it be with you guys in the kingdom of the Most High. But spiritually, we also been invited to his table. And we know that table is furnished with wine, the milk, okay, the bread, the meat, which is all symbolic for the word, man. All right. And that's why the Lord said, um, if you sup with him, if he, well, I'm going to get that in Revelation, the third chapter, right? I'm going I'm to just read it in Revelation, the third chapter. And like we said, man, that's no greater honor, man, sitting at the king's table. That means you're a friend of the king. Like Yahweh Shai said to his disciples, I don't consider you guys servants. I consider you friends. You're greatly beloved, man. Right? So, no. Actually, let me get 2 Samuel, the ninth chapter. That's the spirit, man. Because Jonathan's son, um, I think it's Mephibosheth. Let me get that 2 Samuel, the ninth chapter. He was lame in his feet, man. Okay, and what did King David do? What honor did King David show him? What favor did King David show him, man? Let's get it. I think it's 2 Samuel chapter 9. Um, we know all Saul's sons um, uh, got hunked, right? And Jonathan died with Saul in battle. But King David showed mercy unto Jonathan's son. Because of the great, the covenant that they had with each other. And what happened? Let's read 2 Samuel chapter 1. 9 was 1. And David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they said was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. All right. Let me see. Um. The king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of the Most High unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan have yet a son which is lame on his feet. Okay? So he was lame. He could not walk. Right? They dropped him um, when he was a child while he was trying to run away, trying to escape. Okay? And he pretty much got disabled from that point on. So, but what did King David uh, favor that he showed to him? Let's read verse six. Now, when Mephi, Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely, surely kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually, man. See? He said, listen, you're going to eat bread at my table continually, man. You a friend of the king. Pretty much King David took Jonathan as his own son, man. Right? And he restored all Saul's land and his servants unto him. Right. And what did <laughs> Jonathan's son say? And he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I? I can't even walk. Why are you showing me this great favor? And that's how all of us are in this truth. We're blessed, man, to be called to the king's table because he was considered lame. He was considered unfit. Right. He said, why are you showing me this great favor, man? But he understood because of, uh, um, the, the love that Jonathan had for King David, man. See? And that's the same way the Most High is looking at his elect, man. All right? Because we're not worthy, man. Right? But because of the most, the love of the Most High through his son, he showed us great favor by inviting us to his table, by showing us his secrets, man. 
All right? So let me get that, actually. Revelation, the third chapter now. Actually, that was a good precept. I didn't remember that, actually. That's Revelation, the third chapter. Just like you read about Zerubbabel, he sat next to the king because he had the wisest saying, right? So he super said, you have wisdom, you can sit amongst kings. And through this truth, we're becoming wise again, man. Right? Which is rooted in the fear of Yahweh Bashim Shah. But let me read this. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And I'm going to read Song of Solomon right after this. Right? And we know, like, the, we always break down from the apostles, elders, and that door is your mind. Right? And he's knocking. Right? That's why... And a lot of our people are not answering that call, right? The door is ringing. The Lord is knocking. They're not answering. They see us, the prophets out there on the highways and hedges, and they're not taking heed. They're not dancing to this song, man. Right? This song is not for everybody. Only the elect is going to answer that door, man. Revelation, the 14th chapter. So if any man hear my voice, this book, this word, and open the door, your mind, you receive him. I will come into him, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and will sup with him and he with me. You see? So you start to grow. You'll start to learn. Right? The more you learn of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, is the more that man is going to grow. And more secrets are going to be revealed unto him. Right? Just like Solomon said. Let me get that Song of Solomon in the 8th chapter. Song of Solomon chapter 8. Which we know Solomon, as you read 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 31, wrote many songs, many proverbs, many wise sayings. But this is the song of Solomon. This is the song of songs, right? So one is his finest work. And most people don't understand Song of Solomon. We said that's Israel's relationship with the Most High, but most importantly, this is really Yahweh Shai and his elect, all right? Yahweh Shai being Solomon. Let's read Song Psalm chapter 8, verse 1. It says, O thou were art <clears throat> as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother. Who breast was supposed to suck? Scripture talks about those that are weaned from the milk. The scriptures, man. Tells you, was it Proverbs 5.15? Before I jump back. Proverbs 5.15. It says, um, no, jump on down. It's not 15. It says, uh, Oh, here you go. Verse 19. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times, and thou and be thou ravished always with her love. Right? That's I goes also with Isaiah the 28th chapter. It says, Why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman? Strange philosophies. Right? These different doctrines. Doctrines is comparable unto women. That's what scripture says. Some have depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So you're supposed to be ravished with the scriptures. You're supposed to get involved in it because that's the spirit of the Mashiach, man. And as you get more, as you eat more and you drink more, he sups with you. All right. He's calling you to his table, man. You become a friend of the king. Anyway, let's read on. Let me jump back to Song of Solomon, the eighth chapter. So, so that's what it says, suck the breast of my mother. When I shall find thee without, I will kiss thee, yea, I shall not be despised. I will lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. And who's who's the mother's house? We just talked about the scriptures, also wisdom. All right? Let me read that, actually. <clears throat> Let me jump quick. I want to get straight to the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 12. Right, wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 12, which says, I rejoiced in them all because wisdom goeth before them, and I knew that she was the mother of them. Which you know, the wisdom of the Most High is Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, so wisdom is the mother of them, and once you have this wisdom, Solomon is saying, because of this wisdom, he understood pretty much. Um, Nature, living creatures, wild beasts, the circuit of years, astrology, all of that, man. Okay? He said wisdom was behind creation. She's the breath of the most high. Right? So this is that's the mother of us all. And if you have this wisdom, let's read verse 27. And being one, she can do all things. And remaining in herself, she make it all things new. And in all ages, enter into holy souls. 
So you enter into my mother's house. That's what we read in Song of Solomon, the 8th chapter, right? As you drink that breast, drink that milk, right? I'm also read Song of Solomon, the 5th chapter. It says, she entered into holy souls. She maketh them friends of the Most High and prophets. It's going into this lesson, man. As you sup and become a friend of the Most High, like our forefather Abraham, and you become a prophet of Yahweh Bashem El Shah, man. So we're invited to the kings. This is a beautiful thing, man. All right. Let me, I'm going to read Song of Psalm in the fifth chapter. Let me finish reading this out. It says, so let's jump back. Song of Psalm 8. I will lead thee and bring thee to my mother's house, which we just went into wisdom, who will instruct me. I will cause thee to drink of spice wine of the juice of my pomegranate. <clears throat> Should a doctrine also comparable to wine? Let me read Song of Psalm in 5 and then jump back to 8. <clears throat> Song of Psalm in chapter 5, verse 1. It says, I don't want to rush it, but it says, I will come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. The word is comparable to honey. Okay. Shane John the Revelator said that in, in Revelation, the 10th chapter, he said the word was his mouth sweet as honey. All right. I have drunk my wine with my milk. The scripture is also comparable to wine, as we just read. Right. Scripture also said you can't put new wine in old bottles. We just read milk. Drink the breast of my mother. All right. That's the milk, man. Eat old friends. This is going into who? the elect, man. Drink, ye drink abundantly, O beloved. Right. The elect are beloved of the heavenly father, man. All right. So let's jump back to Song of Solomon, the eighth chapter. It says, so they I read verse two, verse three, his left hand should be under my head and his right hand should embrace me. So after you drink this spice wine, after you go to my mother's house, after you be instructed, after you suck the breast of my mother, going into the scriptures, then what happened like Revelation three and 20, the Lord, what he embraces you. See, so the scriptures, it ties together, man. That's what's going to let's call to his table, man. This is the greatest honor, man. This is the highest honor, man. You see, the scripture says the things that we evolved in the angels decide to look into these things, man. This is no small thing. This is why Solomon said, let me read Song of Solomon in the first chapter. Okay, I'm just jumping to different... Uh, because all the parables go together, man. This is the elect finding their way back to the Lord. All right. <clears throat> Which, you know, I could really do another lesson on this. I did some chapters already, but let me read Song of Solomon chapter one. So supping with Yahweh Shai, growing in the word, growing in the ministry, man. And having the secrets revealed unto you. All right. So let me read Song of Solomon chapter one. I'm going to jump and I'm going to read the Apostle Paul as well. Right. The reason why he got the abundant amount of revelations because the Lord was supping with him heavy. All right. We read Song of Psalms chapter one, verse one. It said the song of songs, which is Solomon. For people out there, he was worrying. who don't understand who wrote the song of Solomon. Solomon wrote it. It says in verse one. And it said it's the song of songs. So this is one of his finest work. Let me kiss. It said, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For thy love is better than wine. And wine is one of the chiefest things. When you read First Ezra, the third chapter, it was wine, it was the king, and it was women. So he said, "This love is better than wine. This is poetry." All right. It says, "Because of the save of thy good ointments, thy name is ointment poured forth." Right. We love that smell, man. The smell of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. It says, "With." Let's read on. It says, "Therefore do the virgins love thee." Who are the virgins? Right? The scripture talks about the, the five wise and the five foolish. The virgins, the scripture says, will also chase virgins to the Mashiach. Right? So the virgins, they love Yahweh Shai, man. They love the word, man. All right, let's read on. Draw me. We will run after thee. The scripture says, the elect follow the land whithersoever he go. So you have to be on fire for this thing. You have to be zealous, man. Right? 
And then that's what the Lord, he substitute. And if you endure to the end, the scripture says, what? The king had brought me into his chambers. <clears throat> What's the chambers? That's the chariots. The wedding chamber is the chariots, man. When the two, the scripture says we shall ever to ever um, forever be with the Lord when we get beamed up, man. Right now, I could go into the rest of it, but um, I really want to just tackle that part. All right. It says we will be glad and rejoice in thee. We remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. So the virgins, they're chasing after Yahweh Shai, man. OK, constantly involved, man, doing the work of an evangelist, being instant in and out of season. And then you learn, then you grow. Right. Let me jump to Psalm, Psalm in the eighth chapter again. And then we jump to the Apostle Paul. All right. So call him now, Yahweh Shim for understanding the secrets, man. Right. And the only way you can get that is by supper with Yahweh Shah. You have to read, you have to study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh Shim Shah, man. Let's read Song of Solomon chapter 8, verse 8. It says, We have a little sister, and this is going to a brother, a new brother that's into the ministry. Right? And she have no breasts. He has no understanding. Right? He's still, he's not of marriageable age yet. Okay? What shall we do for our sister in the day when we shall shall be spoken for? If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. If she be a door, we will enclose her with the boards of cedar. Right? This is all a parable. Right? This is a this is a metaphor. This is poetry. So a brother has to learn, he has to grow, he has to be weaned from the milk. Right? Just like a baby. And after you grow, you start getting that meat. Right? Then you're fully developed. Verse 10. I am a wall and my breast like towers. So now he's developed. Read on. It says, then was I in his eyes as one that found favor. So as he fully developed, his breasts start growing out like towers. Now he's ready to be married to the Lord, man. See? So, man, like I said, man, call him now, Yahweh Shem Shah, man. Supping with Yahweh Shah, man. Just like the Apostle Paul. Let me get the book of Galatians. Chapter 1, verse. Where are we going to go? Galatians chapter 1, verse. So, and you know, we call in other Israelites to the king, but they don't want, they don't want, they don't want this water, man. They don't want that bread. They don't want that milk. They don't want that wine. They don't want that lamb. They don't want it, man. All right. Let me read Galatians chapter one, verse. Uh, let's read verse eight. It says, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, because that's that strange woman. Then which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Make curses come upon that man. All right. Like the Apostle Paul said in, um, uh, I think it's first Corinthians 6, 20, 16, 22. Let me jump to that real quick and jump back to Galatians. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse, I think it's 22. It says, if any, oh, they go. If any man love not the Lord, he how shy Mashiach, let him be anathema maranatha. Right? May he be a curse, man. Right? You don't love your how about you, Shah, make curses come upon you, man. Scripture says you in the spirit of the Antichrist. You're against the anointed. So he said, listen, let me jump back to the book of Galatians. If any man preach any other gospel, make or an angel from heaven, make curses come upon that man. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, like Yahweh Shai said, out of his belly or his mind shall flow what rivers of living water. He's going to grow, man. All right. The Lord sups with him. All right. Let me read on. It says Galatians chapter one, verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. See, he said, but the revelation that which is what the mysteries of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Right. The revelation is the mystery. So he said, listen, I wasn't taught by man. Yahweh Shai himself was teaching me. He was supping with me. OK, he started revealing certain things with, um, to me, man. That's what he's. Let me get uh, Ephesians chapter three. Let me see Ephesians chapter three and I'm going to jump back. Right. Revelations are the mysteries that's being revealed. 
All right. Ephesians chapter three, verse three, it says. How that by revelation, he made known unto me the mystery. See, as I wrote a four in few words, whereby ye read, he may understand by knowledge in the mystery of the Mashiach. Man. See, but it says what, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and the prophets by the spirit. All right. So the apostle Paul said, let me jump back to the book of Galatians. The revelations, the mysteries was revealed unto him. Not by man, he said, but by the spirit. Let's read Galatians chapter one. Um, verse 15 now. Jump back for when it pleased the most high who separated me from my mother's womb and call me by his grace, because at the end of the day, the elect is preordained. They're predestinated before the foundation of the world. Right. So they've been they've been called to grace. They were called to immortality, chosen for immortality from the beginning, man. Right. Because that's what the Lord table um, um, pretty much is. He's calling you to eternity, man. Right, he's calling you to life. Let's read verse 16. To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, and may I confirm not with the flesh and blood. Neither I went up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. So he went down to Arabia, and the Lord started revealing certain things unto him, and then he returned unto Damascus. All right. So like the apostle Paul said, man, the Lord revealed mysteries unto him, revelations unto him, started supping with him. All right. Just like. Um, we get that what Yahweh Shai did for the rest of the apostles, because he prayed for that. Let me get that John, the 17th chapter. We get John chapter 17. So he's revealing his secrets. Like the scripture says unto service of the prophets, right? His friends, his brothers, man, those are of close kin to him in the spirit. All right. John chapter 17, verse 25, it says, and this is a prayer. Okay. John 17, 24. Wow. The whole chapter is good, man. Uh, this is 22. All right. It says John 17, 20. It says, 1722 and the glory which thou has given me i have given them that they may be one even as we are one and not the same entity or being you retarded christians okay it says i in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that thou has sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me man all right that's why the lord invited us the father invited us to the son's table, man. And we're supper with Yahweh Shemel Shah, man. Because he loved us from the foundation of the world, man. Right? <clears throat> it says, Father, I will that they, even though, like we said, we're not worthy, man. Okay? That's what scripture says. For grace was saved by faith, not of yourselves, is a gift from the heavenly father. Just like Jonathan's son didn't feel worthy to sit at King David's table, man. You see? But it's because of the love David had for Jonathan, that covenant. Well, it's the same thing the Most High in Israel, man, but his elect. Right? It says, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Right? So this is going into the 12, okay, and the rest of the men that believed on it. Which thou has given me, for thou has loved me before the foundation of the world. Right? That glory, man. And we all gonna get that glory. Adam Ratza. When our bodies are changed. All right. It says, O righteous father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have that he said, and these have known that thou hast sent me. So the world didn't know the father back then, man. Okay? The Pharisees and Sadducees. They didn't fully know Yahweh, man, even though they sat in the seat of Moses. The scripture said there was a veil that covered them in the reading of the Old Testament, because in the Old Testament, it, it tells you that Yahweh Shai had to come, man. 
So they were blinded, man. Right? Because it was only meant for the elect. It says, And I have declared unto them thy name. Okay? And not just the name itself, but this is going into what? The secret and the mysteries, the revelations. Things pertaining to the kingdom. Yahweh Shai made those things known unto his disciples, man. All right? It says, let me read again. And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them, man. Call him like Yahweh Shai, man. See? So Yahweh Shai revealed those secrets to his disciples, man. All right? And we've seen other men like the Apostle Paul. He started supping. Right, reading and studying, and the Lord revealed his things, mysteries unto him. Right, just like he's done to us in this day and time, man. And you other Jakes, we calling you to the marriage right now. We calling you to the banquet. And they not listening, man. Right, let me get Proverbs the ninth chapter. Let me get Luke the fourteenth chapter. Let me close this out, man. It's a calling my Shemel Shah. All right, like we said, it's the highest honor in the land being called to the king's table. You know, um, the secrets being revealed unto us, man. It's no greater honor than that, man. None. All right, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1. Wisdom hath built her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars. Right, it says, She hath killed her beasts, she hath mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table. Right? <laughs> oh, man. So the beast, the wine, she have sent forth her maidens, the virgins. Okay? So like we talked about, the king's table, man, she furnished her table. It's going into Yahweh Shai, man. You have the wine, you have the beast. Right? And as far as the lamb, the meat, you have the bread, you have the oil. Right? She furnished her table. She sent forth her maidens. These are the virgins. These are the brothers. These are the prophets. She cried upon the highest places of the city, the chief place of concourse. That's what we're doing. And what are we telling you, Jakes? Whoso is simple, let him turn hither. As for him that wanted to understand it, she said to him, come, eat of my bread and drink of my wine, which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. That's what we're doing. So we invite other Israelites to come into the marriage. We're inviting you to this banquet. Okay. But they don't want to listen, man. The vast majority, two thirds. Okay. The scripture says they stiff neck and they hard hearted. Right. The scripture also said Romans 10, 21, that they had gained same people. And ultimately the Mosai himself hardened their heart, man. Scripture says they drunken, but not with wine, not with the doctrine. They drunk off the wine of Babylon, though. Right. And that's why they're going to be destroyed, man. All right. So we're blessed, man. We're truly blessed, man. That's why. Um, isn't the other precept I want to get? And like I said before, if we endure, let me get Luke the 17th, 14th chapter. We literally going to sit at the Lord's table, man. All right. Not just spiritually, but physically, man. That's what he said at the Passover in Luke, the 22nd chapter. And he also said this. Let me read this. Um, uh, Luke 14, verse 13. Luke 14, 12. Then he said also to him that bade him. When thou makest a dinner or supper, call not thy friends. Mm. It says, um, let me read it. The point is in verse, well, the point is in verse 16. Let me read that. Luke 14, 16. And he said unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready, man. Okay, and then when you read further on, it says that son, they were making excuses. Oh, now nah, I married a wife. Oh, now nah, I just bought oxen. Oh, see? So they don't want to come into the banquet. They don't want to come out to the, uh, come to the feast. 
And that's what the Lord told his servants to go eat to the highways and hedges that my house might be filled. That goes with Proverbs the ninth chapter. So we're inviting you, Jakes, to come taste of this supper, man. But like I said, I don't want to say we endure. We literally going to sit at the table with the Lord, man. Right. Let me read that. Actually, I think it's in the same chapter. Luke 14. Verse. 14, it says, and thou shalt be blessed for they cannot recompense thee for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Trip talks about the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust. Acts the 24th chapter. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of the most high, man. And that's what we want to do, man. Literally sit at the Lord's table and eat bread with him and drink wine, man. Okay, that's of course. He said that in Revelation, the third chapter, man. All right, so call him now, Yahweh Shemel Shah, man. You know, Adam Ratzazah, you know, he gave us the strength because Zach to endure to the end. So that I must say, Shalom.